Both presidential candidates addressed the recent officer-involved shootings in campaign events on Wednesday. Hillary Clinton made her remarks in Orlando, Florida, while Donald Trump made his in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Both of those states are considered must-wins in November. Well, as you know, I'm a tremendous believer in the police and law enforcement because we need that for ourselves. We need it. And I've really gotten the endorsement from so many different groups. And they're great people. They're great people. Now, great people, you always have problems. You have somebody in there that either makes a mistake, that's bad, or that chokes. I've spoken to many police chiefs and other law enforcement leaders who are as deeply concerned as I am and deeply committed as I am to reform. Why? Because they know it is essential for the safety of our communities and our officers. We are safer when communities respect the police and police respect communities. With me now on set is national political reporter for Real Clear Politics, Caitlin Huey Burns. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank so you. So both of these can candidates face a challenge. They have to walk a very fine line without alienating either the police officers who mm -hmm. are there to serve and to protect. We saw mm -hmm. that in New York City, cops running to the area where there was a potentially an explosive device, mm -hmm. and those who say that they've been uh, maligned and abused by police officers in the African-American community. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a real challenge for them. It certainly is, and it's such a big issue in this campaign season uh, because of current events. Uh, Clinton has certainly tried to strike that balance. We saw that really on display during the Democratic convention. Uh, Donald Trump has taken uh, more to the side of police officers, making kind of his law and order pitch a real uh, center piece of his campaign. Um, he's been, can, been campaigning with Rudy Giuliani, of course, who's been pushing this kind of law and order message. Um, actually, in an interview that will air tonight uh, that he did a town hall with Sean Hannity, he talked about uh, re-upping the, the stop and frisk uh, mm. program, which is, of course, had been rendered in, unconstitutional in New York, very controversial. And so I think you'll start to hear a lot about that as it pertains to Trump in the coming days. Now. How could the events of the past week shape the message that we hear from both candidates uh, at the debate on Monday night, big debate? Right. I think it really framed uh, both candidates' arguments, not only in terms of terrorism, but kind of their general approach to the campaign and also to governing. So uh, Hillary Clinton took a more, um, uh, more uh, an approach that was uh, more like she has in the past. I'm talking about ways to uh, stop terrorism, but also talking about having all the information before making judgments and that sort of thing. Uh, Donald Trump really used this to promote um, his anti-immigration stance, which he thinks is a national security agenda, saying um, immigration security is national security. And so both of them have kind of used uh, that the, the attacks over the weekend to kind of frame uh, their campaigns. And I think they'll be asked a lot about it um, in the debate, and it will also kind of showcase um, how they would act as president, not only approaching this is issue, but approaching others. All right, there is a new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll out Wednesday showing Hillary Clinton maintaining a six-point lead when in a four-way race nationally. There, we're putting up those numbers. Uh, does it appear that the health thing, the pneumonia thing that was back uh, uh, on 9-11 that weekend, has that gone away for her now? Right. It's not really an issue. And when voters were asked about this and tax returns on Trump's side, there just really wasn't an interest in terms of, of that. Um, I think that she has moved past the health issue. I think the questions about transparency, of course, exist for both candidates, but it also shows that voters aren't necessarily um, uh, concerned about that when there are so many other things going on. Um, and so heading into the debate, I think, will really be um, a, a showcase of personality, of temperament, of ability to be presidential. Um, I think that, that Clinton has gained some, ga regained some footing after losing it in these polls um, that we've seen today. Caitlin, the Washington Post has done extensive coverage on the Trump Foundation. There's a new report out on Tuesday that alleges that Trump spent $258,000 of his foundation's money on his own legal expenses. Now, the Trump campaign has refuted that. Uh, they say that the reporter is biased. They cite uh, the fact that it's inaccurate, but they haven't given any specifics. Why isn't this getting more attention? It's tremendous reporting uh, exposing that uh, Trump may have broken the law in several cases, actually, uh, related to his foundation and that he's been using his foundation uh, to spend other people's money and spending it on things um, 
picture per, of himself. Per, a picture of himself, right. which apparently they have found. Um, and so it is really fascinating how this is not really gaining much traction among voters. I think, you know, when you're looking at voters right now, you see um, Hillary Clinton kind of consolidating her base of support among Democrats, although there's still the enthusiasm issue there. Uh, Donald Trump is starting to, again, consolidate Republicans. Um, his base of supporters are really, you know, uh, together. They're not going to move because of this thing. But if you're talking about uh, independents or Republicans who are not sure if they're going to turn out and vote because they don't want to support Trump and they don't want to support Clinton, um, this kind of thing could have an effect. The way the Clinton campaign sees it certainly is is tying the foundation questions around Trump and transparency and the failure to release his tax return or, uh, or insistence on not releasing his tax returns, tying that to uh, Trump University and the fraud claims around that, kind of bundling it all together to make a case against him. Um, whether or not it sticks or whether it's you know baked into the polling right now, I think remains to be seen. All right. Caitlin Huey Burns, always good to have you. You too. Thanks.